Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another night of NGS action. My name is Isaacs, and I am bringing you tonight a great Division B West matchup between the Spooky Ghosts and Soak Every Lane. I was not originally going to be casting tonight. However, it turned out that I got home. It kind of all just fell into place, and I was like, you know, I got the time. This team needs something to be cast, so I decided I would get in there and cast these two teams. Currently, these teams are in the process of getting the lobby set up. Looking at these stats from these two teams, we're now in week six of NGS, so we're about halfway through our season so far. It feels like it's just flying by, but so far, these two teams are currently sitting in the number seven and the number nine spot in Division B West. Spooky Ghost sitting right now with a seven and five games won to games lost rating, sitting at nine points. Meanwhile, Soak Every Lane, they're at eight points with six wins and three losses, but they've only played four matches. Both of these teams have only played four and five matches, which is uh, less than most of the other competitors in their division. So a win with either of these two teams would knock them up in the standings uh, a few a few ranks, it looks like, for the most part. And they would still be behind everybody. Most people in this division, looks like, have played about six matches so far. So these teams playing only four and five are definitely, you know, Making their 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 ranking isn't necessarily entirely accurate. More looking at the wins and loss rate uh, to see where they truly lie. So Soak Every Lane having about a 66% win rate so far in their season. Spooky Ghost currently sitting around a 60%. So both these teams definitely winning more than they're losing so far. I'm waiting to get an invite to the lobby. We're getting a little bit of a delay here going on, and we should be off to go. Looks like we got Bloody Drapes coming in, Isex the Man, and Grizzly Peeps. Thanks for hosting us. Absolutely, my pleasure. I'm glad you all can make it tonight. I, If you notice the room, so I did a thing this weekend. I decided I was going to just take two days off of everything and decide to try and fix what was going on in my living room. So I was originally casting in what was our library. That is no longer the case. I wired our entire house so I could get ethernet in the cable. So I was in my attic and in my walls pretty much the entire weekend doing a lot of stuff. And I wired from my library all the way like uh, 90 feet, 100 feet, all the way across the house to the other side of the room where I could have a door that I could close so I won't have a four-year-old come running in uh, every so often. That has a lock on it of all things, so it's absolutely fantastic having a lock on a door. So uh, this will make casting a little less chaotic, a little less background noise for all of those in there. Um, so yeah, this is the first stream I'm actually testing it out on, so it's going to kind of be excited to see how the quality goes. But let me get you guys over to the map overview so you can see kind of what's been going on. I did just get the invite to the lobby, so we should be getting underway here shortly. Uh, but Spooky Ghost, they were the home team. They got to choose the coin toss, whether they wanted, uh, and they got the win. So they got to choose between first hero pick or first map pick. They elected to go for first hero pick, meaning Soak Every Lane started our bands off. They went ahead and they banned Tomb of the Spider Queen and Battlefield of Eternity. Spooky Ghost returned by banning Dragonshire and Cursed Hollow. And so Soak Every Lane decided to send us on over to Infernal Shrines uh, for our first map, which is one of the most classic classic heroes maps that you can ever face uh, in competitive hots. It's probably one of the more favorite to be picked and one of the more favorite to be cast among casters as well. You know, the, the, the map was just really well designed, having the three lanes, the arcane punisher objective in the middle. Uh, and so a lot of teams feel comfortable on a map like Infernal Shrines, and I always enjoy casting here. Looking at these two teams, it looks like we've got everybody in the lobby. So we're just waiting to get the readies to go. Fox Spam coming in with the follow. Welcome, Fox Spam, to the channel. Glad you can make it. Hope you are enjoying yourself in this September. For those who don't know, September, you can do the exclamation mark September. Uh, Twitch is doing a discount for like, I think it's like 50% for all uh, subscriptions. So, you know, go out, support your favorite streamers uh, currently in uh, through all NGS. I know I'm going to go ahead and go drop subs on again on all my favorite streamers out there but go ahead and go out there and uh give give your support to all your streamers it's at like a 50 percent discount it's like a dollar i think i don't even know what it is honestly i haven't looked it up but regardless anyway we're getting in here to infernal shrines gonna start 
off this map. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see where these two teams, you know, these two teams have had enough time to do a little bit of research, four games uh, a piece to do research on to see if there are going to be some target bans. But if we're looking at the macro bans, you know, the typical meta bans on a map like Infernal Shrines, looking at banning the tanks like Johanna, May, possibly getting rid of like the Diablo on this map. Offlaners, Sonya, Diva, Hogger are definitely focuses of this map. The healer pool is definitely focused typically by a lot of teams. Getting rid of Stukov, Deckard Kane, Lucy can wall ride his way to victory and get his team in really great position on a map like Infernal Shrine. So those three healers definitely make their appearance on. And also the double support meter really works well on Infernal Shrines. You can stay around that objective a lot longer and kind of force your team off, especially those early objectives. So we'll see where these teams go. And Stitch is actually going to be the first banned by Sp Spooky Ghosts here. Not typically one that I see focused a lot on Infernal Shrine because it's so hard to land those hooks around the objective with all those minions in the way. But sometimes we did see it in Storm League. I casted Storm League a couple weeks ago, and somebody, I can't remember their name, but they played Stitches so well. They played it on Infernal Shrines, and I had my doubts, and they made it work. So a scary Stitches can still get things done on Infernal. Mephisto, more likely to be banned out here on Sogary Lane, getting banned out here as well. This is a great Gazlo and Blaze offlane map too. This is just this is a great offlane map in general. I mean, Dahaka does well being able to put pressure. It's it's kind of weird, but the the champ who does the best is, in my opinion, Sonya, having the ability to spin her way to get a bunch of those minions and also be able to do the double soak. But while we are talking about offlaners, Vala and Nazebo. That's more of the meta bands that we are talking about. Getting the axe, but there's still a lot of good options. Brightwing is still available. Stukov is still available. Johanna and May are both still available, although Johanna is typically not first pick worthy. May could be, but it's going to be Tychus picked up by Boundary X on Spooky Ghost. So putting a lot of focus on the minigun hero. Going to be able to do that single target shred. Also provides a lot of siege damage with and against the Punisher going into that Odin. But the Brightwing Johanna are going to be picked up by Soak Every Lane. So there is the, the Fairy Dragon herself and Johanna to boot being able to use that Condemn to pick up a lot of minions and also control that objective very, very, very well. So we could see the Stukov was not picked up. Johanna highly countered by Varian with Tychus having the taunt. This could be a very good taunt Varian kind of composition to put into a Johanna, being able to lock her down. There's the Stukov, Kael'thas, holding on to the tank for now, wanted to put the emphasis on getting that Kael'thas before the second ban comes out. But the Stukov was picked up. So Kael'thas gonna get picked up by Spooky Ghost here. Excellent wave clear. Excellent objective clear, excellent single target burst damage. Not necessarily going to try and get it on the Johanna. The thing to keep in mind, Brightwing was picked up. She can add a lot of spell power to whatever champion Kael'thas is trying to drop his burst on. So we may see Phoenix instead of Pyroblast here. Just because if Kael'thas puts Pyroblast on somebody, Brightwing puts his spell power on and really, really cuts that damage down. But Sonya going to be banned out here by Soak Every Lane. Don't want to see the Sonya coming in and spinning to victory here. So now we're starting to see a little focus on the bruiser pools. It's only September, but I'm drinking my Oktoberfest because I absolutely love it. And Junkrat going to get banned out by Spooky Ghost here. So it is going to be the Dahaka in the offlane. No variant banned by Soak Every Lane. So that is still an option on the table. They're going to need somebody to match up with Dahaka, and Dahaka can be that bully in the offlane. Has a lot of sustain, has a lot of wave clear. Tassadar and Tassadar picked up online. by DMN. So a lot of burst damage coming in. Great wall pressure around the objective. This could be where we start to see the Zul or the Diva come out. You know, Diva will fare less well into the Dahaka, but has better rotation if they decide to go with the double soak approach. Uh, but Zul will have the be and Zul will have really good double pressure. Not going to be able to kill Dahaka. Very few champions can. But it is going to be the Maltha, one of the champions that can kill Dahaka, and ETC instead of the Varian. So Nullius going to pick up that ETC power cow from down under. Going to slide in, sing a song, and hopefully, hopefully not get polymorphed. I think Bloody has like a sixth sense right here. I was talking about, you know, the potential to kill the Hako is slim. There are very few champions, and Mouthale was picked up. And meanwhile, in chat, Bloody's going, counter it with Mouthale. And he's going to be really happy here in like a second or two to see that the Mouthale was indeed picked up. But Gib going to round it out. 
with Sylvanas and Ruffian coming in with the 69 bits. Ruffian, I think that's going to put you in first place over Tiger, potentially, for the tattoo fundraiser and getting to pick the location. I don't know. I have to go check it, but I know it's putting you in really close. But she's coming in here, giving the support over to Spooky Ghosts. Go Nullius. So got to give that shout out with the bitch here. Thank you so much for the support. Definitely appreciate it. Love when teammates come out and support the stream. But here we go. I really kind of dig this uh, this ETC. It's going to be tough. Here's the thing. ETC is going to have a really tough time landing a good mosh into the Brightwing Johanna. It's really going to be a big challenge for him. But if he can, they've got the blow-up potential for that combo it's 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 there's no doubt they're gonna blow up whoever he gets so i'm curious to see you know if i'm etc i'm not looking for the five man moshes as much or the four man moshes what i'm really looking for is the single target picks finding where you can be like we can catch this guy out before any support comes i can lock him down with the mosh i have tychus and kale toss to just blow that target up and give myself a 5v4 meanwhile on the side of soak every lane i'm really excited to see this they have a really good all-around team fight they're gonna do really well in the 5v5 fight so Excited to see how these teams throw down here on Infernal Shrines. But let's get these teams introduced. On the blue side, we have Little Wolf on Stukov. Eric with Ak on the Kael'tas. Little, uh, sorry, Boundary X on the Tychus. Nolius on the ETC. And Kaleidius on the Mouth L. That is Spooky Ghosts. Meanwhile, on the red side, we got Soak Every Lane. We got Kid on the Dahaka Gib sitting on that Sylvanas. Foxbam on the Brightwing. Grizzly Pair coming in on the Johanna. And we got DMN13 on the Tassadar. Look at this team, ready to fight with the angry cloud, coming out strong. Into the mid lane we go. Keltos getting stacks, Dahaka getting stacks. Johanna getting the second blind, going into the Tychus, wants to make sure she keeps them locked down from the auto attacks. Wants to keep that minigun down as best she can, gonna take the second blind with it to make sure he really can't get those blind that, that minigun damage. Neither team electing to fight, Malthale wanted to go up into the top lane to start abusing this Dahaka. Dahaka going to try and do his best to survive in that lane. Has Brightwing to come up if he needs it. Team's going to just scrap it over. Tassadar already heading down to the bot lane. And we'll try to keep our eye on the, the health bars in the top to see if Malthale may, may pick up that single lane kill. But Malthale already rotating to the mid lane. Going to try and do the double soak game. Meanwhile, soak every lane already getting... Their namesake in. They are soaking every lane, rotating back and forth between the two lanes. ETC is now arrived. Gonna try and slide in and pick the fight onto the Sylvanas, using the Banshees already to get herself away and turning around to fight Tychus. He is blind. Gonna take some damage, but Stukov is there to provide the peel. And everybody just gonna go on their merry way back to the lanes. Meanwhile, Mouthdale getting the better of the trade so far. Tahaka will get his one, you know, caveat into that matchup is if he can pull Mouthdale under the towers with the tongue. That is the way that we're going to see Dhaka have a slight chance if he goes into the lane 1v1. He should be able to keep up just fine in the double soak game, but Kael'thas actually rotating up. There's the pull. The team is here to get the Maltail Polymorph already used, but the wall does not connect. Maltail going to run up top, gets the switch, but runs right into the Johanna. Going to get slowed here by Kalidius. And he's going to be able to get away. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Sylvanas was getting vision, but ETC going to scout it out. This is bottom camp picked up by the spooky ghosts. Kaleidius, Kaleidius. I have no idea how he wants me to say that one. And that is camp pressure and a slight bit of experience once they pick up all these minions. If they go get these minions, they're trying to get the kill on a DMN. They're going to lose a couple globes for that. Probably just one. Yep, just one globe. But they should get the experience lead here once they clean up all these minions. They are going to miss Soak in the bot lane, however. A lot of minions being missed so Soak Every Lane doing a good job of, again, Soaking Every Lane. Already going to get up here with Fox Bam and DMN on the minion camp, the Bruiser camp in the top lane. And we're getting the first Punisher to come online up here in the top lane. Sylvanas is rotating to the mid lane, making sure she doesn't miss any of that sweet, sweet Soak. Johanna going to clear out the bot lane and then look to rotate top. Dahaka will come all the way down. Can double Soak much better than Mouth Hill. And this is where... If you're Soak Every Lane, you have that advantage. Dahaka was getting beat up by the Maltail. Did a fairly good job, staying pretty healthy. But this is where he shines, being able to double soak this mid and bot lane and not have to get up top. He is going top, however. I'd like to see him come down and just keep double soaking until the team calls him up. 
But looking to go for the 5v5, we did mention they do have the stronger 5v5 fight. So going to bring the Haka up and just have him in position. Bruiser can't picked up. This is going to be that Mortar Punisher being picked up by whichever team. 12 to 0 so far in kills, but Nolius looking for the fight on the ETC, looking for the slide. Gets the slide onto Tassadar, but the Polymorph isn't picked up. Big gravity laps by the Kale Toss and a Stukov Silence to follow means that is going to be Tassadar going down. Johanna soon to follow, and that is two quick kills by Spooky Ghost. Great combination from the Kale Toss Stukov there to be able to follow up on the ETP power slide and get both of those kills. And now they are just sieging away here in the bot lane, or sorry, in the top lane, bot tower. And Malthel is having a good time with Kael'thas picking up these minions. I don't know if Soak Every Lade will be able to get back in time. Kael'thas and Malthel do an excellent job clearing these minions out. Looks like they're just going to defend, sending Dahaka down to start that double soak. And this is what I wanted to see Dahaka do from the get-go. Going to pick up a lot of these globes. Malthel now in tow, trying to keep that double soak. And the Punisher going to come in. Now, it's the Mortar Punisher. Johanna's going to have no problem pulling it back, keeping it within tower range. Nolius actually did take tower shots, so he is getting fairly low here. But will get himself to safety. Sukov's going to be able to top him off. A lot of damage coming on Savannah. She took a big chunk of damage from that Mortar Punisher. He is going to jump again. Johanna is the target. She does not have Iron Skin this time, so the Gravity Lapse and the Sukov Silence are able to pick up the kill. And that is another kill going over to Spooky Ghost. Nice Power Slide, Gravity Lapse. Stukov silence combo they got going there, and Tychus able to get pretty much his entire minigun off on whatever target they want. Really shut them down. So good little combinations coming out of here. Spooky Ghost, they do have the pick potential, like we talked about early in the game, looking for those isolation kills. Soak every lane, they just need to, when their 10s come online, slow pick these fights, and then just win with attrition. Their 5v5 will definitely be stronger once level 10 comes on, as long as they don't get picked. That is always the question. But right now, Spooky Ghost doing an excellent job controlling two of the three camps, getting both their own and the bot camp both times. So getting a nice little experience lead with the kills. Big silence onto the Johanna. She can't pop Iron Skin while she's in there. ETC keeping her in with the knockback. She does get the Iron Skin off. Instant mount picked up at seven. So she will be able to get herself to safety there. Getting a little armor, I believe, as well. Oh no, increased duration of Iron Skin, sorry. I thought she got a little bit of armor. Maybe that one's URL. But big slide going down onto Dahaka here. And look at this combo. I mean, it is on point. Spooky Ghost is very, very good at landing this isolation pick combination. ETC power slide. Kael'thas is already channeling up that gravity lapse, landing it on these targets. And then Stukov has the silence in tow. Tychus ready there. And they are just death balling with this four man, getting these picks using that combination to take down really any target they want. They're able to get the Johanna and the Dahaka, and those are the hardest ones. So well done so far, playing their composition as it should be played with the draft they picked. Meanwhile, Soak Every Lane, they're gonna go top lane. They're looking to just get on. Tens are online for both teams. Spooky goes, we have massive shove by the Stukov. It is Mosh Pit by the ETC. Odin by Tychus, Malthel going for the last rights, and we're still waiting to see what Kael'thas is going to go with. Meanwhile, Dahaka going for the isolation. Archon picked up by Tassadar. Blink kill by Brightwing. Wailing arrow by Sylvanas. And Falling Sword coming in from the Johanna. Curious about that. Maybe just trying to get an instant teleport to the back line rather than the Blessed Shield because, you know, this Kael'thas is, is getting a little bit of work done. Still holding on to that ultimate. Did go with the Phoenix. That is what I expected him ultimately go with with a Brightwing on the other side having that extra spell power. But objectives, camps being picked up, bruiser camps being picked up by both sides here. Gonna go to the top lane. Bot is has been picked up, the bot fort by the side of Spooky goes using their tens to, to finish that off. And this top fort is almost gone as well. And this is gonna be the mid shrine. So this is a very, very important shrine for Spooky Ghost. If they can get this, they will have all three forts down. That's going to create a lot of pressure in the lanes. It is going to be that Arcane Punisher. Camp Timer is picked up by Soak Every Lane. Sylvanas got the start, but she didn't elect to finish it. I'd like to see her finish this before she rotates down. Not doing so. Going to rotate, rotate herself down. 
And now the engage is there. ETC getting a fair bit of damage. Johanna continuing. He slides in very low, so he gets polymorphed right away. It's going to be a... No, ETC still alive. He's not falling down. Johanna gets back in both tanks. Actually, Johanna is the one to fall. Dhaka is pulling the mouth L back with the tongue. Tassiter trying to do as much damage as he can. Sylvanas doing the follow-up on the mouth L. They need the kill. Can't get it. Keltos gets a two-man flame strike. They do get the kill onto the mouth out. Meanwhile, Dahaka is getting power slid by ETC, going one-on-one -on -one against the Tychus. Tassadar trying to put down the damage. It is a one-for-one -one trade, but it's 30 to 17 on objectives. We need a quick re-engage and fast here from the Dahaka. The wall keeps ETC isolated there, but the Polymorph used no follow-up. Eric with that, getting a little far forward on the Kael'thas, gets pulled in, but has the shield available, pops it, gets himself back. And this looks like it is going to be the second Punisher picked up by the side of Spooky Ghost. We're trying to get a kill here on the Tychus with the Dahaka Tongue. He's been landing these tongues left and right, but unfortunately just no follow-up pressure is killed. Keltos getting fairly low. Brightwing just needs one more. Oh, but Tassadar can't get it. And nobody died. Everybody got pretty low in that fight, but no deaths going down after the initial two tank for tank trade. I am shocked that ETC survived power sliding in at like 300 health and somehow came away with his life. Died later on in the fight. Johanna using the Falling Sword actually to re-engage. ETC did have tower aggro, and Johanna gonna fall. She went back in aggressively, gets the Mouth Ale trade, almost had the ETC, but this Arcane Punisher continuing to do so much damage onto this fort, and this is a triple fort pickup. Now, we do see in the top lane, while this Arcane Punisher's finished, that mini camp was pushed. I believe Dahaka went up to finish it off, but imagine if they had gotten that cleared off before the fight. This top fort would already be gone. That would've been a fort traded back, so, they may still get it. I don't know, Kael'thas is on his way, may be able to clear this off. Gets the Siege minion there, so it's not gonna be completely finished. But that's where I would've liked to see that Sylvanas just stay a second longer, clear that lane out really quick, or at least get most of the minions out of there, and then rotate down for the objective, since it was just a 0-0 shrine to start with. But no fort did fall in the top lane. I did think that was gonna fall. Malthel looking like he's going to try and finish it off. So it is only two forts so far, not all three. Bottom camp is being picked up by the side of Spooky Ghost, continuing to put their camp advantage six to three so far over these bot lane camps. Claiming double camp bonuses. Big power slide and Mosh. Here it goes, but the polymorph immediately there. However, it doesn't matter. Tassadar was caught, and that is a kill going down onto the squishy of Soak Every Lane. So big power slide in, gets the Mosh, even though Brightwing got the polymorph pretty much in time, well-timed. They were still unable to get that crowd control and everybody on Soak Every Lane, or sorry, Spooky Ghost was in position to get that kill. And that is something they've done well this entire game is following up whenever ETC calls something out, the damage is right there, ready to throw everything down and get that kill. Looking to try and get the Dahaka here. Dahaka looking to defend. Elects to back himself off. Maybe trying to get a cheeky pull under the tower. Take a couple shots. So that is the third fort that is going to fall. And so now, Spooky Ghost, in control of all three lanes, have Siege Minions spawning in all three lanes. Now just need to do the 1-3-1 one, one and just start the small, the slow choke. Put Kael'thas in one lane. Dahaka in the other on opposite sides of the map. Dahaka in the top lane, Kael'thas in the bot, and use, or sorry, Kael'thas and Malthale. Dahaka's on the other team. Kael'thas and Malthale in opposite lanes and use this ETC Stukov Tychus to just roam around. Looks like they're gonna stay, stay deathballing for a little bit. Try to use Malthale to, to put the pressure on with the double soak. Meanwhile, Soak Every Lane getting on the even talent tier now. So 16 is available for both teams. That's one thing that Soak Every Lane has done well. They make sure that they're not, even though they're down 7-2 to two in kills and 6-3 to, uh, six to three in, in camp pickups in the bot, they're still fairly close to experience. Only half a level out, but be careful here. Dahaka getting slunned. Look at that combination. It has not failed them yet, and why would it? Another... Power slide, gravity lapse, silence, kill coming in for the spooky ghost. That is a wicked combo coming out of them. And they are playing it very well. Dahaka will be able to teleport himself in, so the four man can poke from a safe distance and try and get a fight picked off. ETC does have the power slide. Last rights was used. They do have that as a timer. But this is starting to be cleared. Look at that. 15 already picked up. 
for this Frozen Punisher. ETC in a, hiding in the bush, trying to just zone everybody out. Johanna checking it with the flare. 26 picked up. Tahaka is now spawning, so if they were going to pick a fight, now's the time. 34, it looks like they're going to elect to defend instead. Backing themselves off here. They're going to try and defend this keep. On even talent here, so they should do a fairly good job with it as long as they get Johanna to pull it and pull it right in between these two forts here. They should be able to clear that out fairly fast with the Tassadar Sylvanas. Tassadar went... Oh, he went Storm. Okay. So, is it going to have the most red? But Johanna just has to hop it over. Got to use the Blinding Flare. Got to do some damage. Oh, so Tassadar does the damage. So, Tassadar gets the pull. And he's going to pull it to the right position. Need to get it up a little bit further. Johanna didn't use the Blinding Flare to do the damage to the Punisher to draw aggro. But... They're using this Punisher, putting him on the back line, exactly where they want it to be. Johanna does take the second shot. The Punisher is going to turn off, but oh my goodness. The just sheer amount of damage coming out of that Kael'tas Tychus shreds the Johanna before she can even pop the Iron Skin. And this could be a game-winning push. This Punisher is healthy. Gets the final hop. They need to pull it a little further north. They do. Dahak is here for the defense. It's going to be close. This is a pretty good defense with both damage dealers being online for the side of Soak Every Lane. We'll see what Spooky goes. They get the catch on him out there. He gets a flip, trying to get the damage down, but is going to get caught. Will Stukov save him? He cannot. It's, it's going to be one for one trade so far. Now the hunt is on. Bright, we get to heal the Sylvanas, and Tassadar are going to see if he can get another wall. Gets the damage down with the Kael'toss. Looking for the wall, has the speed boost. ETC goes in, gets the Mosh. They do have the Polymorph, so that is going to be ETC interrupted yet again. Pulled back by Tahaka. Tassadar did get fairly low, got out of the Arc, uh, Archon form. And the tongue misses. That is going to be the end of it. One for one is the trade. The keep did fall. So good pickup by Spooky Ghost here. And they are going to continue to assert their pressure. I would like to see them pick up this camp. But they do. You know, they're, they're comfortable with the two to one trade. Continuing to just get two camps for every one that Soak Every Lane gets. Meanwhile, Soak Every Lane... They've got the chance. They need to get to 20. They do see ETC here. They get the Tahaka Tongue. ETC does not have Mosh, but Johanna gets thrown up by the Gravity Labs. Brightwing is teleporting herself in. The Phoenix is actually thrown out. They could engage, but they don't have the Blessed Shield. They do go Falling Sword, so don't really need to force a fight. 20s are just around the corner for Spooky Ghost, but Soak Every Lane. They will be able to get their 20s safely as well with all these lanes collapsing into their base. They can soak safely from their base, get to... 20 talent tiers and then look to do this 5v5 i don't know they did get this one 5v fight here they did have the 5v fight here and they ended up going one for one in that one and that seemed to be the closest fight so far if they could just get this this wall wailing arrow combo that they're looking for they could really get the de the hurt down and get the damage gonna give up the camp don't have their 20s stukov gonna get that top off ETC getting the death metal, so going to be able to mosh again once he goes down. Kael'thas getting the increased range with the flamethrower. Tychus getting that big old red button, and Malthale getting no one can stop death. Going to be able to revive himself. Meanwhile, 20's just around the corner now for Soak Every Lane. Going to be able to soak these last two minions up. Should be able to get it for this next shrine. We will have a 20 on 20 fight. Spooky Ghost looking to see if they can get one last cheek pick. They do see Johanna. They get the slide. If you get the Mosh off before the Iron Skin, there it is. Polymorph, she's got to get out to get the Iron Skin. The heal comes in from Brightwing. They get the wall. This is it. This is what Soak Every Lane needed. They get the bait in. Johanna immediately jumping in. They get the ETC. Looking for the mouth tail. 20s are online, but the Death Mosh may catch. This Brightwing is going to go down the Phoenix. Johanna goes down in the top lane. Malthel sitting fairly low. Tassar is trying to get up there. Massive shove is going to make sure that doesn't happen. Sylvanas is here, so the Malthel should fall, but he does have no one can stop death. And he's not falling. He is continuing to stay alive here. And Malthel somehow gets away. That was an excellent Tassadar wall to get that kill onto ETC and Malthel, but they only get one. And then they try to get the turnaround engaged from Johanna, but ultimately weren't able to finish it off. I believe Sylvanas got zoned out in the death mosh gotten three members down here. You can't interrupt that one with a polymorph. And that is going to be Spooky Ghosts continuing to push their advantage. There is real no contention here. 
coming out of soak every lane, they can't. So they just need to push out their lanes as far as they possibly can before they set up for this defense. Tassadar doing that in the mid lane. Savannah's trying in the bot to just push out as many minions. Dahaka now actually going to come down and try to push these minions out as well. Savannah staying mounted here. Not not sure why. Maybe going in and trying to get the camp in the bot lane. Trying to pick up the camp. Going to have to get back quick, though. Team's going to need the damage onto the Punisher here. Going to be able to get those Wailing Arrows off. It's going to be close. I think she's going to be just a little bit late. Arcane Punisher coming in. I understand the camp pickup is going to delay the, the next wave. But the Punisher already here. Johanna has to get the pull. She does there. Tahaka is there. Throws out the Isolation, but it misses. And now they need to pull this Punisher down. The wall still needing to be fall. Tychus throwing down some nukes with that big old red button. They got to back themselves off. Don't want to get caught by another ETC Mosh. Savannah's actually is the one that pulls that time. But ETC gets pulled in by Tahaka. They can focus them down with the Polymorph. Gets the power slide away. So soak every lane are up against it, but not backing down. Going to finish off this Punisher. And again, they lose a keep, but they don't lose the game. They're playing very resilient. Haven't won a Punisher yet. It's getting a lot of value on the map, but they're not out of it. They've played around the advantages that Spooky Ghosts have been getting, and they're looking like they want to fight here. Dahaka not here, though. Massive Shove going to keep Johanna away. This is the camp steal now by Spooky Ghosts. And again, two for one. Sylvanas got that bot one before the Punisher, and so <laughs> Spooky Ghosts go, you know what? Fine, we'll take yours then. And continuing their two for one camp trade. So they have the camps. I wonder if Dahaka has... XB Dahaka, yeah, Dahaka's got the 20 to 17k on Mouth Ale. So Dahaka's getting the double soak better. But the mercenary camps, 5.7 to 3,000. Heroes, that's a big difference. But the minions, look at the experience difference in the minions. 52,000 to 35,000. Soak every lane, living up to their namesake. For sure. That is literally what kept them in the game this entire game. So well done by Soak Every Lane to make sure even though they were losing a lot of these fights with the isolation picks, they didn't lose the Soak. But look at this. Little bush gank going on here. They're all just playing so patient. Soak Every Lane not biting. Maybe we'll get it, Sylvanas. Getting mounted up. The call's made. Don't have the teleport for the DC, but he gets the power slide anyway. Sylvanas gets the blink. Gonna get herself away. And back they run. No tails between the legs. Got the blink out of the Sylvanas. We'll consider that a win. That's a big 60 second cooldown that they were able to get. And the Bruiser Camp's going to be picked up by both sides. DMN. It's really going to be up to this Tassadar to get some of these critical walls in these team fights. The one thing that they've been doing, you know, if DMN's been paying attention, they love to lead with this ETC slide. So if he can zone off the rest of the team and time it well so he can wall off ETC from the rest of his team and maybe get a blow up on the ETC. Both these teams sitting in bushes. Look at this. Everybody invisible though on the side of Soak Every Lane. Brightwing taking that level 20 upgrade. Looks like they're just sitting around. Gonna try and get some cheeky rotation play here. ETC is coming in. Kael'thas as well. Nobody's moved. Oh, the Haka moved! But he's right in the middle! There's the Polymorph goes down, but doesn't happen for the ETC Mosh. ETC goes in. There is no Polymorph available. The silence is put on by the Haka? I don't know who that was, actually. No, it was Wailing Arrow. Had to be Wailing Arrow. Anyway, Archon being thrown out. Getting very low from this Kael'thas. Oh, he took a couple minion shots, and so he did go down. Tassadar the first to fall. ETC getting in, trying to be just very aggressive now. A big power slide, big red button going down to Haka, trying to get away. I'd stop a pop by the Johanna, but she will fall. Maltail is going to clean this up. And this is the victory march coming in from Spooky Ghost here. Dahaka going to burrow under, try and get himself away, but the flame strike going to make sure that does not happen. Increased range for the win coming out of Kale Toss. And this, or this core is going to melt. And this is going to be game one going over to your Spooky Ghosts. GG's by both teams. And how about that? That was absolutely well done by Spooky Ghost. They knew the comp they had. 
They played it to a T very, very well. And soak every lane. I mean, give them credit. They were up against it, being down members time and time again with these picks. But they stayed in this game. I don't even know. What was that at the end? 30? Was that a 30-minute game? It was close. I the game time shows zero. I don't it's that stupid bug, but that had to have been close to a 30 minute game. This stream's been going for 38 minutes, so that was that was insane. But I mean the big fight, I mean, in that mid when they got the Tassadar wall down and they caught the ETC in Mouth Ale, huge play by Soak Every Lane. But even bigger play by ETC getting a positioning so they could get the Death Mosh onto Sylvanas, Tassadar, and Brightwing and made sure that there was no follow up damage onto the Mouth Owl. Mouth Owl somehow lived and they were able to turn around, and get a two for one in that fight and continue to press. Rather than being down two members right away and it being a five to three for Soak Every Lane the other direction late in the game. Actually, it would have been a 5-4 to because Mouth Ale at that point did have No One Can Stop Death. Still. Big plays coming around by both teams. 59k damage coming out of Tychus. Getting that single target burn. 49 by Tassadar. 44 by Sylvanas. 48 by Kael'thas. And 50 by the Mouth Ale as well. Throwing it over to the talent screens here so you can look at what's going on while we wait to see where we're going to go for game number two. A lot of maps left to choose from. We'll get over to the map screen here in a few minutes. But Stukov going for that vigorous reuptake at level four. It's getting that extra, extra healing. And getting that reduced cooldown as well. And then going at 13 with the root. Very good for the Varian. I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the ETC. With uh, the comp that already come out, and I would like the variant, but ETC definitely made it work. Went for the Echo Pedal at 7, too. Getting a little extra pushing power in those lanes. Kael'thas going fairly standard. Living Bomb build here. Taking the Flame Strike at, or Flamethrower at level 20. Give himself a little extra safety against this engage potential. Mainly the Tassadar wall. Tychus going heavy on the grenade. Again, Pretty standard for when you're trying to blow up just one person. Yeah, pretty pretty standard stuff. Coming out by both teams. I mean, Sylvanas went for that single target shred. Trying to get the upgraded W at 4 and 7 to really be able to burn through the armor of some of these targets. But Tassar are going the Sign Fusion at level 1. And Johanna taking the Zealous Glare. I mean, I would say that's the Zealous Glare got some pretty good value considering Tychus only put out 59. I mean, 59 is a lot. But for a 30-minute game, it could have been so much worse. So the Blinding Flare definitely, going the double Blinding Flare, uh, or Shield Glare, sorry, at level 1, definitely got some pretty good value there. But let me throw it back over to the map screen for you guys. I know where we're going for game number 2, but I don't know who picked it. So we are going to Towers of Doom, another classic map. And once I know who sent us there, I will be able to update that for you guys. But Spooky Ghost coming out strong here. Like to see it here in game number one. And Spooky Ghosts are the one that picked the map. So that means Soak Every Lane, they got the choice between map pick and first pick, and they wanted to go first pick here. Let me take this small reprieve. Get a little bit of a drink. Gotta love Oktoberfest. September and Oktoberfest. I mean, there's no better combo than that, really. Absolutely love it. Going to Towers of Doom. Classic. It ain't over till it ain't o it's over map. You could be down to one core shot left and somehow, some way, will yourself to a victory.
looking at the uh, offlane matchups, you know, we saw the Malthale and Dehaka both can be utilized again on this map. Both do very well on this map. That matchup does very well on this map. So I don't I don't anticipate that's that's going to be the matchup we see again, but it could very well be. Dehaka does well and Malthale does well into Dehaka and Malthale can double soak just as well. So maybe we will see it. A lot of the champions we saw in the last game are very strong champions in this game, especially coming out of the side of Soak Every Lane, because it's a very team fight heavy map with the potential of Siege with the Sylvanas. So, I mean, we could see Soak Every Lane if they like that composition and they just didn't like what they ran it against. They could pick that whole composition again. That composition would plug and play very well. They could get rid of the Mouth Ale, they could get rid of the Stukov or the ETZ, either one, and try it again and 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 make it work. Meanwhile, Spooky Ghost, I mean, it's a little harder to get the single target picks in this map. Can still work. ETC can definitely provide a lot of value. Uh, Tychus can do well into uh, on this map, depending on the composition picked up by the other team. Kael'thas does excellent on this map. Uh, not as much value on a, map as on a map like Infernal Shrines, where if he misses heroes, he still gets the objective. But... Blade Drapes coming in saying, I predict Malthale, predict Malthale versus Zool. That'd be a good matchup. Zool, highly favored. I mean, this is the, this map is like off drainer heaven. Off laner heaven. Sorry, off drainer. I don't know what that was. Um, you know, so Sonya loves this map. Zool loves this map. Tahaka loves this map. Even Diva loves this map. She can get those rotations on really quick. Any double soaking champion really loves this map. I know a lot of people want to see Probius come out on this map. I, I don't like Probius on this map. But we are getting the Reddy's Bible team. Oh, also of note, Chogal. Very, very good on this map. So if either of these teams plays a mean Chogal, we could very well see that come out here on Towers of Doom. But roles have been reversed. Draft orders have been reversed. So now Spooky Ghost is going to get the last pick, get that off-lane matchup that they really want. They got it in the last game. The Hawk was picked early. So now they can try and get that off-lane matchup again. But Mephisto, going to be the ban yet again. We saw, what was it? It was Mephisto. I don't remember what the ban was by Spooky Ghost. And then it was Vala and Nazebo. They're going to go with the Nazebo first this time. Stukov, there it is. Stukov going to be the one that is not going to be seeing another play on game number two. Soak every lane. Don't want to see it happen again. Waiting for that last band to come out from Spooky Ghost here. Ah, oh, it was Stitches. Of course it was. Bala is open. Whether it'll be picked up or not. Oh, they go with the early mouth ale. Soak every lane wants it. They are flexing hard here. They're like, we, we saw you play the mouth ale. You played it pretty good. Now we want to play it. Play it even better. I don't know. But with the mouth ale, a lot of counter potential into a mouth ale. And Gul'dan and Vala being picked up by Boundary and Eric. Stolen away here. So I wonder if they're going to run the the Johanna again with the Vala and with the Gul'dan. They could really get the Johanna. Or they could go like an Anubarak. They could go May. Going to take the Tychus. Going to take the Varian themselves. So they're taking a couple picks. Soak every lane is taking a uh, page out of Spooky Ghost's text book here. I mean, I wanted to see the Varian instead of the ETC. But we got Mouth Ale... Antigus with a Varian picked up. They can't get the Stukov because they banned it. But it still works. This single target roam around taunt target works with Malfurion. Works with Anduin. So there's still a lot of champions in there that you can do it with. Uther? Tassadar going to be banned out by Spooky Ghost. So now you know what's coming at you. You got a taunt Varian running your way. You got to get a cleanse. So what do we got left? We got Malthale. Or Malfurion. Sorry, Malthale. Uh, Lili? Uther? Rhaegar? Is that it? Did I forget one? Probably did. 
But a lot of... Maybe in the Anduin. Okay, so cutting away the taunt taunt combos there, getting rid of the Anduin. So they take the Malfurion with the cleanse. Suddenly, not as many good follow-ups with the taunt Varian from the support side are left available. I guess Deckard could technically if you if you time it time it right. But but it's gonna be the Brightwing May. So Nullius gonna take the May Brightwing by Little Wolf, or Little Wolf takes the Brightwing. So they get the bright week. They get the counter engage to the taunt target here. Are they going to take? Okay, this, they do take the Sylvanas to Tronda. Okay, Tronda works with the the composition there. And Clidius going to get that off lane matchup. Go into the mouth ale. All you really need is a little bit of burn. Or just double soak. Could see the Zul. It was bloody right. But they're trying to switch it. So now Colidius is going to run the Dahaka into the Mouth Ale. So says, you know what? I saw what happened the last time this was run. I'm going to try and run it myself. So Mouth Ale going to beat up on the Dahaka in the 1v1. But Tahaka going to be able to rotate through those bushes just a wee bit faster. So Tahaka can just keep himself away. Again, it's just the, down to double soak. And we did see, even though Malthale was bullying Tahaka, Tahaka did get much more soak in that last game. And Raka has arrived, so it is officially a party. Need to get some party flair. I need, I need like some party music like Weenus. I, I have none. But anyway, looking at these matchups, Soak Every Lane pretty much doing exactly the same comp that Spooky Ghost ran. They don't have the Mage, but they've got the Siege in this game. And they got the single target, let's find him and kill him. So we'll see what happens here in game number two. But let's get these teams introduced. On the blue side, we got them Spooky Ghosts. We got Eric with Eric on Vala. We got Little Wolf on the Brightwing. We got Nolius on the May. Boundary X on the Gul'dan. They're trying to mess me up by moving all around. And Kalidius back on, or Kalidius, Kalidius on the Dahaka. Meanwhile, on the red side, the throwing up the double rock on hands. We've got Soak Every Lane. We've got Kid on Mouthale. Foxbam on Taronda. Gib on Sylvanas. DMN on Tychus. And Grizzly Pear on that Varian. And the Owl gets a double. Look at the stacking out of the ball, a stacking fell. Wow, fell flame by the Gul'dan. It does put out a lot of single target damage and team fight damage. And it's more reliable than corruption. But it's hard to play it. You have to be very close to be able to get that off. So we'll watch this Gul'dan's positioning. It's been a long time since I've seen a fell Gul'dan, fell flame Gul'dan, and competitive. I see it in solo queue all the time, but. Big stun going down onto the Vala, but unfortunately Grizzly Parrot doesn't have the taunt yet. So Varian being that good old bot in the one to four levels, can't really do much. Throws down a Lion's Maw every once in a while. And that's it, trying to stack it up. May looking to try and find some sort of picks here when they have the advantage. These level one to four is heavily in favor of Spooky Ghost, but they are getting poked off by this Tychus Sylvanas. And once level four arrives, we're going to be in danger. Both teams picking up their sappers. Varian is going to be sitting down in that bot lane, trying to get as much soak as he can. The rotation coming down, and possibly the invade, but it is not going to be that invade. And Varian... Gonna have to back himself up, waiting this last half level to get level four. Ruffian, let's go, spooky ghosts. Looking for the quick 2-0. But all you Soak Every Lane fans need to come out and give your support. Get this reverse sweep started, or at least send us all the way to a game numero three. But here comes Tom Varian. It is online, and now Soak Every Lane have the comp they want, and are gonna look to pick some of these fights. 
So Vaughn is going with that W build again. So going to go for that single target armor shred, which will give a lot more value to the Tychus. And Sylvanas, they're going to be able to shred through a lot of these targets fairly quickly. But it's going to be the Dahaka Mouth Ale. So Dahaka doing a very good job making sure he's staying away from the Mouth Ale. But the Brightwing is the taunt. The stun goes down and good. No, Sylvanas gets the last shot. Goodbye, Brightwing. Called my shot almost a little too early there. But Brightwing does go down. But Vala going very aggressive with the vault forward. Losing quite a bit of health. Sylvanas here trying to get some shutdowns. But Tychus did jump forward, gets the heal by Taronda coming in with the clutch heal there, making sure I think Tychus is down to like 22 health. Rackham, let's go, both teams. Everyone deserves loves from the fans. All right, we got cheer coming in for both teams, but Sylvanas is gonna get it. Nolly's diving all the way and gets the taunt. Sylvanas just gonna put down the damage onto the May, throwing out Blizzard to zone everyone off. It is the gentleman's agreement in the top lane, and here we come down into the bot lane for the 5v5 fight over this first major objective. Six is online for both teams. Neither team sitting at the seven right now. Dehaka actually being the target. Gets the taunt. Has the heal coming in, but the damage going down. The shred from the Sylvanas W did land, and that means the damage going to kill that Dehaka. 2-0 in favor of Soak Every Lane. And they got the level seven talent leads, and they're looking for more. Gul'dan out of position, but Varian not going to pull the trigger. Going to back himself away. Didn't have the rest of the team quite in position to follow up on it. Meanwhile, Malthael and Dehaka doing what they do best, soaking up those lanes. Currently sitting. Oh, Malthael's getting the better end of that. Look at that, 6, 6K to 6.6K to 5K. Malthael. Pretty much one of the big reasons, aside from the two kills, that we've got this almost full level lead coming out of these two teams. Soak's coming in. Camp's picked up. Neither team looking for the aggressive evade yet. Back we go. Into bot lane. Malthel is doing a good job. He got the mid. Look at this. Mid lane is pushed out. All those minions going to go to waste. So Malthel doing an excellent, excellent job. Gul'dan did finish the Fell's Flame. So he is going to be able to put out a lot more damage having... That radius increased. We'll pair it off in the later talents and get the damage. But Tychus very far forward. The polymorph goes down, so he will get stunned. The taunt was on the Vala. I think that taunt may have saved Tychus' life. Did not. Good try by Grizzly Pair to get the taunt onto the Vala to save the Tychus. But Vala getting some big, big damage in here. <laughs> Hard kick coming in. Let's go, Caster! <laughs> Love it. There, I think we got all our bases covered. We got a cheer for Spooky Ghost. We got a cheer for all teams. We got a cheer for the caster. I don't think there's anything else to cheer except a really good game of taunt onto the May. But the tower does fall. And Nolly is going to get away with just a sliver of health. Did not have the Tychus to burn. And here comes the delay in the bot lane. Now, Dahaka can get there faster than Maltel, but Maltel's got the push advantage. It tends are right around the corner for Soak Every Lane. Tens being picked up. This is going to go uncontested with a 10 talent tier advantage. Parry picked up by the Varian. Odin by the Tychus. Last rites by the Mouth Ale. Mind control by the Sylvanas. And the Starfall coming in from the Taronda. I had to check to make sure it was called Starfall. Talk going down on the May. The follow-up stun. The mind control. The Tychus shred. Everything going in. And that is the one thing they do not have is no blinds when May is the one that is taunted. So Tychus able to get that mini gun off to full efficient. The bigger they are, the harder they're going to fall. And a big pickup by the Soak Every Lane in the bot lane. But they're not sieging. They have the Sylvanas, and they're not sieging. They're electing to send Tychus mid lane. Maybe catch a kill on Dahaka. And so everybody on Spooky Ghost is going to be able to sit under tower and clear this off. Gul'dan does have very excellent wave clear. But if anybody stepped their toe out of line, Varian was there for the taunt. So we'll see how this continues to develop. Meanwhile, Gib going to go to the mid lane. Give Malthale a little bit more of an advantage. And we see Soak Every Lane. A little bit more comfortable here in game number two. Are in control. Didn't fall behind in the early game. Getting their camps a little bit quicker here. Malthale winning the double soak game. Feel a little more comfortable with this, this composition they drafted, which is pretty much 
the draft that Spooky Ghost had in game number one. Got a double alter phase coming in here. Malthel was able to get the Bruiser Camp in the top lane. So that is going to give a lot of siege pressure in the top lane as well, setting up for the eventual cap. One, two, three. Forts are going to go down. Malthel rotating down, but Dahaka is here. Did not get in for the pull. Varian just has to be careful not to get caught here, and they wait for the Malthel. Malthel actually getting the channel. Dahaka going to make sure that is interrupted. Vol getting interrupted, but we got a big mind control onto the Gul'dan. Icewall is going to be able to stop the engage from the Tyranda, and Tychus getting fairly low as well. Now the counter engage is on. Gul'dan getting the corruption. Does not get the last one to hit onto the Tychus. The Starfall trying to zone everyone off. Have the team pretty well split with that Starfall there. Nolius is getting fairly low. Going to go down. And Foxman continuing to get the pressure push with these Owls. Gets the stun. Does land on the Dahaka. The corruption by the Gul'dan gets some pretty good shred. But how about that Starfall? Well done separating the two, the team. Oh, big taunt by the Varian there. Goes in, gets the catch. Gul'dan trying to get the drain, and now the return is on. They get two kills. Malthael wasn't there, was getting the channel off. Taronda does fall. Gul'dan did fall. And so there's a three for two so far in this extended fight. Eric going in, gets the kill onto Sylvanas, and now Malthael may go down to Dahaka here. Varian taunted forward, or charged forward, and Vala gets the cleanup. So what was... A really, really sticky situation for Spooky Ghost turned into a disaster for Soak Every Lane. Spooky Ghost get a one-for-one -one trade here. But more importantly, they're going to be able to push this bot lane in and get some big siege damage onto this bottom fort. So Spooky Ghost find their way back into this game with a five-man ace for two. Things going down from everybody on Soak Every Lane. Just a little bit too aggressive. Moving forward, Bankai coming in, raiding with a party of 30. Welcome, everybody, and thank you, Bankai. Everybody, for September, I was talking about go support your casters. Go throw a sub over on Bankai's channel, or at least a follow. Coming in with a party of 30. Welcome, everybody. We are in game number two A Spooky Ghost versus Soak Every Lane in Division B West. Spooky Ghost ran a very good pick composition in game number one, and we're just getting pick after pick after pick and slowly put their gas, foot on the gas and won game number one. And now Soak Every Lane has done that in game number two, pick the pick comp. We got a big collapse going on to the mouth L. He is not getting, oh, okay, he's not getting away. I was like, there's no way. There's no way he's getting away there. But Soak Every Lane has now run the pick comp with the taunt variant, mind control Sylvanas, and they are in the driver's seat here in game number two. So we'll see what they're able to do. And if pick comps are the key to success in Division B West. Double alter phase coming online. Mouth ale, still 13 seconds. So it's gonna be at least one for it going over to Spooky Ghost. We'll see if the side of Soak Every Lane do decide to go up. May did get the turn off the slush ball at level four. So going to get a little bit of extra siege damage on our own. It's going to be the Gentleman's Agreement. Dahaka and Sylvanas going to trade off in the top lane. Got to check what this Gul'dan's damage is. 33k. Look at that. Gul'dan starting to crank out the damage. Getting that level 13 and 16. Going to continue to ramp out with that level 1 Fell Spirit pickup. So as long as everybody gets in nice and tight, we're going to see this Gul'dan start putting out some serious damage. Varian's got to make sure he gets that target deleted. Not Philly, thanks for coming in with the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a fun time here. We got a little engage going on here. Oh, a big rain of vengeance by the Vala on top of Taronda. And that is going to be a huge pick by Spooky Ghost. Icewall going out, doesn't catch the Varian. And Tychus now turning around. We got the turn around onto Nolius on the May. Does not have the pass available. Last rights does go down. They trade one for one. Varian did fall to the Gul'dan because Gul'dan is a very scary... Orc? I think he's an orc. I believe he's an orc. In the back line. So we get a trade there. It's not a troll, is he? No, he's an orc. He's gotta be an orc. He's Thrall. He's an orc. Anyway. One for two. And Spooky Ghosts have found their rhythm here. They were getting bullied around there in the early game. But they have suddenly, when they once they got that five-man ace, have found their footing here in game two. And even though they're down eight tower shots, they have the prize of the bottom four, and it is a perfect time to pick it up with a triple altar phase coming online. 
They are going to get this bottom one, probably uncontested. I imagine Soak Every Lane is just going to go top and fight over the top two if they're going to fight for them. But it looks like they're going to go... Okay, now it looks like they're rotating up top. Sylvanas is the only one down the bot lane. Maybe go fight this to Haka. They really don't need to be here. No camps are being picked up. No pumpkins are running in. This is what I like to see. This is exactly what I see when I was from Soak Every Lane. They get the taunt onto the Haka, and here they go. Gets the stun, the starfall, the shred. And that is going to be a kill going over. So one picked up so far, but two for one still picked up. And now the camp is picked up by Spooky Ghost. They do get the pick. Sylvanas a little too far forward. Maybe she thought that they were going to run. Ooh, second shot. And that is going to pick up there. Maybe she thought they were going to go up to save the Dahaka. And so was confident pushing. Didn't check the camp. But everybody now arrives. Malthael did get that wall with that camp pick up in the top lane. So maybe able to just turn that top fort over. Ice wall going out. Doesn't connect on Varian. Varian going in. The Horrified does not land. It looked like it may have landed. Just must have been a toe outside the line. And so ultimately, they did get all the pumpkins, I believe. 23. Yeah, because they got a 5. They just got a 5 tower. So yeah, they did get all the pumpkins there. So well done by Soak Every Lane. I, that's exactly the play I wanted to see coming out of them, and they played that perfectly. Not Philly. Go Soak, pull it back. Yeah, he's an orc. Okay, good. I got confirmation. I'm not crazy. He is an orc. And what's his damage at? His damage is getting up there. 48,000 now. Just continuing to grow exponentially here into this mid and late game. And now this is where I like to see Soak Every Lane potentially get the siege here. They're down about a half level. They were up a level. So they're, they've fallen behind. Get the mouth out rotate down. He's on his way. Varian's getting in there. The blind, or sorry, the mind control does miss. Varian's going to need another parry. There he gets it. Mouthale is here. May does not have any disengage. Tychus pushes the big red button. The siege is on. Dahaka can teleport down into this bush if he wants. Finishing off the camp. So they've got a little bit more time, but everybody getting low on the health bar, so they may have to back it off. It's only one altar phase, so they don't necessarily need it. Mouthale's already running himself away. Sylvanas actually getting fairly, fairly low. Has to be careful. Tyke is low as well. Varian needs to be careful as well. Reign of Vengeance lands, and that is going to be a kill. And that is a huge pickup. That's going to for sure secure this, but they can also start sieging out. Sylvanas trying to get to the mid lane to prevent that siege. Gets a lot of the wave clear. And we'll see how Soak Every Lane can defend this here. It's going to be five more shots going over for Spooky Ghost, so it's going to be 14 to 18 now. And the mid four being stopped so far. They don't have the best wave clear. Tychus can do some. Sylvanas did go bottom. Try and clear this out. We'll flip it back. So if they can defend this safely, they don't want to die for it. Ooh, Tychus did get stunned, but there was no follow-up. May using those slush balls to turn off that fort. The fort looking like it is going to fall. Taronda in the front. Malthale trying to get into the back, but the fort does fall. So it is going to be a trade of forts. Mid for bot. Varying up in seven more seconds here. 18 to 14. My, this game got close all of a sudden. Pumpkin camp picked up. Going to help get that advantage to the bot lane for the side of Spooky Ghosts. And everybody, we're just going to get a trade back of forts here. Did the pumpkins all, yeah, all the pumpkins died. So it's just going to be another trade back. Still the five advantage here. Malthel actually does find Dahaka. Gonna try and get some damage done, but Dahaka pulling him under. This is actually gonna be a really fun fight to watch if it continues. It's not gonna continue. Dahaka backing himself off. Malthel just using that sustain to heal himself all the way back up. And here we are again. The good news is this is away from the tower, so this is an easy fight for Soak Every Lane to make. These minions should be picked up by Spooky Ghost to potentially force somebody from Soak Every Lane to stay bottom or... But they're not picking it up, so that means Soak Every Lane can rotate up top. No problem at all. And so it's going to be the five. Sylvanas staying down for now. It looks like it's going to be a potential gentleman's agreement. Varian's got to be very careful because now the rotation is coming up. They've got it scouted. Malthel got it. The Reign of Vengeance thrown out. Dahaka did get the channel interrupt. But here we go, big corruption going on onto the Varian. Ice Wall is going to miss, but Malthale is in to protect. It keeps Varian alive just for a second. Malthale does get the last rights down onto Brightwing, so they get the kill. Dahaka is trying to get that Tychus. Malthale getting fairly low. 
does have the no one shall stop that no one can stop that so he will be able to get back meanwhile fox spam oh may uses oh she has the the 20 so mouthell is back they did trade Toronto away i thought may timed that perfectly and i was like wait a minute she has the 20. Has he been able to cry freeze, get herself back to safety, but Malthel is back, and Malthel wants this fight. He wants to get in, get the damage down, has both the damage dealers alive, so if there was a fight that they did want to try and win, this could be it. No healer available. They could poke down with the Tychus grenades, but they're going to go back. They're going to trade for the fort instead. They're comfortable giving this one up. It's only going to be five shots. Sylvanas and Tychus try to trade this one away. Malthel push out the lane. It's the safer play, the smarter play. The less risky play, but here is the boss pickup, and this will pretty much even everything up here. I don't see, I don't know, Malthel, if he can scout this out, he has Tychus and Sylvanas near, but he's not going to pull the trigger again. Electing to just back himself up here. Actually, May wanting to go in here, catches Malthel, he's going to get the flip. The blind going down, the blight wing is here, and they're going to get the kill, and he does not have the ability to come back this time. That's a huge, huge pick for Spooky Ghost, gets the kill on the Malthel. With the Noah can stop death, has the 80 second death timer. Oh no. Gonna take a while to get back. Have enough time to go grab a beer, go to the bathroom, and get back for the fight. I said beer and immediately had to take a drink of mine. But here we go. The siege is on. May does have the turn off potential with the slush ball. So that will be one fort going down. Sorry, I keep saying force. These are keeps now for those who are actually paying attention because this caster clearly is not. These are keeps that are falling. Got the upgrade when the uh, sewer came online. We got the five man, the bot lane. Mouthtail's still dead. It's like, guys, hold on. I'm almost back. Longest death timer ever when you have no one can stop death. Like the anti rainer or Rainer can get one of the shortest death timers at 20. Althel gets the longest. So here we go. This is potentially game ending. The time is 10 shots will go off for Spooky Ghost here. They got to wait for Malthel to get back. They get the topple. They get the taunt. Nolius doesn't have the passive. This is a huge pick by the side of Soak Every Land. Look at this. They're destroying the May. Great crowd control chain coming out there to make sure May could not get herself away. Two kills. And oh my goodness. Just when you thought the game could potentially end, Soak Every Lane says, not yet. Have five, have Sylvanas. And they have 40 seconds to do whatever they want. Take out their red paintbrushes and start coloring this map red. Four to eight. When is the boss up? Two minutes and 49 seconds. So not going to be able to get the boss. But going to get this bottom. Malthail can put pressure to get the top. What's the mid looking like? Mid's getting sieged in. I mean, we could get a potential six. Nah, it, it's going to be at least a five cap. Oh, up in the top lane, Maltail was getting caught. Has the no one can stop death. Oh, my goodness. And he's back. So the siege is on in the mid lane. Min's getting pushed out. They know Gul'dan to Hakka are not here. They could siege this up and get the five cap. And then the six cap in the top lane. Oh, it's going to be close. They have to wait for Malthel to get in. The ice wall. Oh, big ice wall coming in in this mid lane. And a huge stun onto the Tychus to boot. Look at the damage going down. Starfall is there, but everybody is just melting. Malthel has to get in, do the damage, mind control onto the Gul'dan, but the pull onto Taronda, and that could be... Oh, it doesn't get the kill. That's a huge, huge ice wall coming in from the May there. Able to get the kill. These are three kills, and they could just play patient. They need four. They only get three right now, so they need to flip this bottom first, and this could be game. Here they are. Sylvanas, Varian, need to get over here. Do what they can. Try to get this channel off, or maybe get the kill on the Haka, but there, it's finished. That's all Sylvanas really could do. Gets pulled in, it's gonna go down, and this is gonna be game two. Going over to the Spooky Ghosts and the 2-0 domination victory. GG's coming out well played. Very, very back and forth. Towers of Doom, game number two. How about that? Great plays coming in.
by both these teams. Just when you thought Spooky Ghost had it won, Soak Every Lane came back and got the two-man pick and turned the map around. And then just when you thought Soak Every Lane was in the driver's seat, Spooky Ghost comes back and gets the Maywall and gets the 3-0. Wow. That was that was awesome to see. Well done by Spooky Ghost, first and foremost, for getting back in that game because it was looking pretty dire for a little while there. But able to do it and get themselves back in. I got a message, our captain, from them Spooky Ghosts. Let's see if we can get this interview started because that was, we got lots to talk about there. Holy guacamole, though. I'm going to go hang out in the lobby, see if anybody decides to join me. Ruffy coming in. Ruffy, you definitely have the, the lead now. You have to have the lead now with the, that 69 bits. For the tattoo location placement when we get to 1,500 subs. Thankfully, we're only at 21 subs so far. So we've got 1,400 and... What, 69? Huh, Venus. Never mind. Rackham coming in with the five sub donation. So that puts us up to 26. Thank you, Rackham, so much for all the support. Definitely appreciate it. So now all we got is, what, we're at 26? So if my math's right, now no, we're at 16, or 1460, 74. 1474, I can do math. So we got 1474 more subscriptions. Got a year to do it, so we got tons of time. September is the best. Oh, Little Wolf, you're here. Welcome. September is the best. That's my, It's my birthday month. Really? What's your birthday? It's in like three days. Oh, you're the 12th or the 15th? 15th, yeah. I'm the 19th. We'll have Yo, to have a party. Let's go. Happy almost birthday. Yeah, happy almost birthday to you too. Thank you. What a way to celebrate getting the 2-0 domination victory. How's the team feeling? We're feeling great. I feel like we're, we're hitting our stride this season. This is this it was this was really fun. Yeah, I mean, hitting your stride, that that's, that's an understatement. That was... Really well done by the team there in both these games, not only showing a very clean come, you know, from start to finish, but also a nice come from behind victory. So, I mean, let, let's let's start from the beginning because that's usually a good place to start. Uh, they send you to Infernal Shrines. Have you have you had a chance to do much research on Soak Every Lane? Did you know what was coming out? Like, what did you think when they're like, all right, we're going to Infernal Shrines? So, first of all, I was like, we're going to see Blaze this game because they've, they've been playing a lot of Blaze. <laughs> Uh, for mm -hmm. their tank, so I wanted to take advantage of that. But then um, we went to Shrines. We originally thought, okay, we're gonna maybe go for like like a double Bruiser Mephisto composition. Um, I think it'll it'll make the fights pretty easy on the point. Mm -hmm. And they banned the Mephisto outright. And then I was like, okay, darn. <laughs> well, the next biggest thing is that I want to really pressure their front line. Okay. Um, I think uh, I said in, our, in the last interview that I did with a caster, but I think that at our level, like pressuring pressuring the other person's tank is like always a good thing. Sure. Um, so then the Tychus was like immediately the, the the first priority for that for us. Okay. So yeah, I saw I saw that picking the Tychus priority definitely big. Then we saw I believe it was the Stukov Kaltos came out two three kind of yeah. deal. And then you saw for them they had the Brightwing, they had the Johanna. You kind of knew it was going out. And so you had the option toss up. Was there ever a debate between Varian and ETC, or was it always nope? We want Nolius on ETC even though they have the Johanna and the Brightwing for the Mosh interrupts? So we did not think of the of the Varian in draft. We thought about him after draft. Uh, immediately after drafting, we were like, hey, maybe Varian would have been really good in this composition. <laughs> but um, but we were really happy with the... We've been practicing like that this composition specifically with the, with the ETC. Um, we've been having... Because we have a new tank this season, it's been kind of hard meshing our communication. And I think... A tank like ETC and Stukov specifically after he gets um, a targeted excision makes for like a very clean like okay this is when my cooldowns up and this is when when your cooldowns ready and it they they match they match up pretty well in my opinion. Yeah, I was gonna say for saying that you're having you know communication difficulties, it did not show in that game one. I mean the the synergy the the combination was like every single time just so cleanly executed. The power slide to the gravity laps to the Stukov silence to the minigun and just boom, there went that target. Really yeah. running it to, you know, very efficiently up to level 10 for sure. 
in those mm-hmm. early game. And then level 10 comes online, and we get a couple of, of pretty big fights back and forth. But the big one I want to talk about was actually later in the game. You guys try to get the cheeky level 20 on 19, like the last hurrah, and you find it, the Johanna rotating down. But then Tassar gets the two-man wall and separates ETC and um, Malthael Malthael, from the rest of the team. Yeah, and they get the turnaround engage and actually do fairly efficient. So at that moment, what was comms like? And eventually, how did you guys turn that around to get the big, big play? What was the big, big play? I don't remember. It was ETC Deathmosh, for sure. I know that was oh. a huge play, but I mean, you guys yeah. eventually, I think you eventually get the, like the 2 0 or I think it was a 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. Oh, it was a 2 to, Oh, I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. Cause I remember we, we ended up winning that interaction because it ended up being a 2 to 1 trade. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't think there was a ton of communication other than that we were looking to, to back up a bit. I think the okay. fact that we got kills there, it was a little bit sloppy, honestly, on, on our part there. Um, their, their engage was good. Um, I think that was post 16. So usually when, when I see like, uh, the only thing that goes through my mind, at least playing Stukov at that point is like, okay, I have to hit kind of my, my panic buttons, which is usually like the, the vigorous reuptake and then trait one talent, mm-hmm. um, at 20 that you get to like pop twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I mean, I think that that situation could have been one of those situations where we, where it could have gone either way for sure. Yeah, it, it looked hairy. It looked like, for a second, I mean, you guys were trying to get that last little engage with the, the Storm Talent advantage, and you found it, but then Tassar lands that wall, and I was like, oh, no, this is what Soak Every Lane wants. But yeah, then ECC, yeah. he lands a three-man death mosh on, I believe, if I remember correctly, it was the entire back line of Soak Every Lane, which allowed Malthale to get away, and then ultimately you guys turned it around. I was like, there's no way they're turning this around. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, like, I thought no. you were dead to rights. No, specifically, like when we were talking during the game, there was a comment of like, hey, what what level 20 um, are we are we looking at this game? And we were like, well, they're getting to the point where we're like, you're their kill target. So I think the we we, we definitely agreed that the, the death mosh would have been really good, specifically also because we have mouth ale there. Right. Because it's mm-hmm. like if he's allowed to to be in that fight for even just a little bit longer, it's it's so much damage. Yeah. So so then we end game number two. We go to Towers of Doom. You guys get to pick the map this time. Take yep. us to Towers of Doom. And the thing I was most curious about, I mean, I love the draft, but the thing I was most curious about is you guys ran the mouth hail in game number one and uh, saw how badly it beat up to Haka, like was was bullying him in lane for sure. And then they picked mouth hail first pick. Was it always the plan? Like, we're going to go to Haka, and even though we don't, you know, we know that how this matchup works out, we're just going to do it better? Or what was what was going through? So we had we had our initial game plan right there of of just opening a path through bottom. Okay. Um, so our ideal pick would have been Mouth Ale, um, if we could have picked a solo laner for right. ourselves, right? Um, I think Alex or Kaleidos, the guy who plays uh, Mouth Ale on our team, he's, he's he's just a really stellar player on that hero. Mm-hmm. But he also wasn't the priority pick for what the team wanted to do on the map, so we couldn't we couldn't pick him first. Um, and then after they picked him. Um, Alex knows that hero so well that he he's generally very comfortable um, double soaking into into an, an opposing mouth ale in most situations. Oh, yeah, and he I mean he did it he did it fairly well. It was you know we were watching it, commenting you know on it like oh this didn't go well for the Dahaka last game. Although Dahaka did do okay soaking, uh, but mouth ale definitely was pushing him off. But in game number two, Dahaka did a great job of making sure he was always in the other lane. The mouth ale, so mouth ale really never had the chance to to bruise him, but. Uh, for you know, you guys ran this pick composition in game one. Spooky or Soak Every Lane kind of comes around and says, you know what, we want to run the pick composition. Taking the first three picks were all picks that you guys had in game number one, I believe. And yeah. uh, then you know they come through and they're playing it very efficiently. I mean, really, for you, where did you think the turnaround point was? Where it was no longer we're behind, we're just trying to do damage control, and then all of a sudden we're we're in the driver's seat and we're pushing to win. So there, there's two points, I think. There was one point where we we had gotten a little bit of structure damage bottom, and bottom was like, like that was like our goal. That's you win bottom, you win the game, right? Um, so there was this part where we had gotten some poke bottom, and the bottom alter phase had happened, um, and we were all really low, and there was this kind of like small debate for a second of like about whether we could have finished taking bottom. And I ultimately decided to tell my teammate, like, hey, what, we, got, we got our structure damage, I think I think that if we lose this fight, it'll go really badly for us. 
Um, so we, we, we backed off and I think that was a very disciplined play. Mm -hmm. And the other play that I really liked, um, that, that I called was for the, uh, in the mid game, I also just kind of started thinking about Matheo as well. And there was a couple of times where we were like, okay, we can rotate up and kill this hero. And I think those, those two things really helped out. Um, once we had momentum, my, uh, my teammate, Eric actually helped out with a lot of the calls and, um, it, it kind of snowballed from there because we were once we were able to get tempo on the structures i think we had firm control of the, of the game in general yeah absolutely and definitely catching that mouth l a couple times when no one could stop death was not was on cooldown getting those 80 whatever second death timers were huge that gives you so much time with the advantage so uh yeah, yeah. absolutely well done eventually coming around and pulling i mean were you guys nervous at all when all of a sudden soak every lane got the the two picks late game and all of a sudden it looked like, oh man, Spooky goes had it one and then all of a sudden here comes Silk Every Lane gets the two kills and now maybe they may win the game or were you guys like, no, no, we're, we're still okay, we got this. It was a little hairy, but I think I think overall we were calm. I think in general the, the idea was like, okay, what can't we do on the map? Well, we can't defend bottom right now, but there's there's a, there's this avenue top that our, that our Dahaka had already opened up. And again, that, that same thought of like, okay, we can pick the mouth ale. And in that situation, it ended up working out really well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, not able to to do everything you want to do, but finding the small advantages when you can and ultimately getting your team back in a position to win the game. Uh, just awesome to see. Awesome to see. So uh, real quick, uh, I'm going to ask you for the series. There's a lot of shining moments in there, but who do you think was the team MVP for tonight? Oh, that one's tough. Okay. Um Tally Duncan Jr. I want to say, I want to say Null, our, our tank player. He's been playing super well. <laughs> He's been doing really, really well. I think a lot of the time with him, we've noticed like a little bit of hesitancy, or at least I've noticed a little bit of hesitancy when when I want him to go in on someone. And he's been just really good at communicating, like, okay, this is my kill target. This is who we're going on. And he's just playing really, really well. Um, the the other thing is that he's also I also just really appreciate how much of a of a disciplined player he is. I think. Sometimes I want to go in a little bit too, like, um, like, like, not what's the word for haphazardly. Okay. Um, and he's he's very he's very disciplined about what he's looking for in a lot of situations. And I think for the most part, our entire team right now, um, it's it's a very like mellow squad that we have going on, which I think always helps. <laughs> for sure, it's much better than the crazy screaming, yelling, point finger kind of thing. So mellow, mellow is always good, especially yeah. when you're uh, you know trying to get that come from behind victory when everybody's like, you know what? We got this. Just, just, yeah. just keep playing. All right. Well, last things last, I'm going to open up the floor to you. Any shout outs you'd like to give uh, on Twitch chat to viewers around. You got a lot of people coming in supporting out the spooky ghost tonight. So, uh, oh, nice. open to you. Any, any shout outs you'd like to make? I just always shout out my team. I'm, I'm just really happy with them right now. Um, we kind of started the, the season off a little bit rocky. I think our last two games has been some of the best hots that we've played. And it's just it's just felt great. It's been really good. So I'm I just shout out to Eric, uh, John, uh, Tally, and Alex. Awesome, coming in, shouting out the team. Love to see it. Like we say, it's never how you start; it's always how you finish. So when the team's hitting their stride towards the end of the season, you love to see it. Anyway, little thank you so much for coming in, giving the interview. Definitely appreciate it. Congratulations again on the 2-0 victory for Spooky Ghost here, moving yourselves up quite handedly in the standings. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys here down the road. Yeah, thanks a ton. Thanks for the cast, and take care. Absolutely. You too, bud. Have a good night. Bye -bye. And happy birthday. Oh, thank you. You as well. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Little Wolf, the healing extraordinaire, coming out of Spooky Ghost, playing the Stukov in Game 1 and Brightwing here in Game 2. Well done by the team. And uh, overall, just, just an excellent series. I mean, Soak Every Lane, they definitely... I mean, I thought they were going to win that Game number 2 for sure, and we were going all the way to Game number 3. Such an exciting series. They definitely delayed... I, I still got to look back and see how long that first match was because that thing that was a long infernal shrines match but um so far thank you all again so much for coming in dropping all the support here let me jump off the stats and so i can uh get over here to all the fun stuff you guys can see my smiling face i've almost got this beer completely finished it's down to you know that much left so we're almost there 
try to get one in a cast. But thank you all so much for coming in. I got to get these these shout outs in one more time. I mean, first and foremost, Ruffian, thanks for all the bits. Love when team comes out. And then obviously I got you know interrupted, got distracted by the interview. But Rackham coming in with the gift of five gifted subs. Love to see it in the month of September. Coming in, uh, gifted sub to Zephyr, Geo. Oh, Geo got one. Porky, Toast Monster, and Jinxie Cat all getting the subs. Congratulations, guys. And thank you so much, Rackham, for the support. Ruffian, thank you so much for the bits. And Not Philly, uh, Fox Bam, Grizzly Peeps, thank you guys so much for the follows tonight. Definitely appreciate it. Hope you're sticking around, enjoying the channel. Lots more casting, hopefully, coming up down the road. Got a lot. You know, I took a week off from casting last week. Was doing some, you know, house stuff and uh, now trying to get back into it. May have some Stormcast. I haven't set up my schedule yet because I didn't know what my schedule was going to be. But hopefully getting some of these more late night casts in as the week progresses. But uh, let me see. I think that is into tonight. I don't think there are any places to raid. I'm not seeing anything on either of these screens for potential places to raid. Everything looks like it has finished off. So I am going to end the stream here. Uh, have a fantastic... Oh, thank you, Bonkai, for the raid. I completely forgot about that. Thank you so much, man, for the raid. Coming in with the Party of 30. Got to shout that one out more time. Everybody, go over to Bonkai's channel. He's casting like 10 times more than I do. So head over there, drop some support, maybe drop a sub or two for Bonkai. Give him some love for coming in with that raid. But for me, this has been Isaacs. Have a fantastic night, everybody. Thank you for coming out, watching, and I will see you here next time. Good night, everyone.